it's Mari McInerney here at the Daru Strengthening Disability Advocacy Conference here in Melbourne and I've got Fiona here. Fiona, could you introduce yourself? Yep, I'm Fiona Tripping. I'm the Ballarat Disability Advocate for Grampians Disability Advocacy and NDI is a full support officer. And why are you here? What's on your mind in disability advocacy? For me, most of my work is um, doing appeals, guiding people through the disability support pension process and NDIS appeals process. And I think the biggest issue that I face is trying to get legal representation for my clients. Um, I believe there's, particularly with the NDIS, there's an imbalance of power because uh, the NDIS always has a lawyer there. We have to apply for a lawyer and we don't always get it. So to me, that I believe is a breach of human rights because there's an imbalance of power. And what is it? Is it a funding issue? Is it? It's a funding issue. Yeah. yeah. So they will only take on clients if they've got merit. In other words, I think it's going to win, or it has to be a novel or complex situation. Of course, we're supposed to behave like lawyers, and we're not trained or paid as lawyers. And to me, it's putting our clients at a disadvantage. Can you give an example of where that has actually played out very badly? Well, fortunately, I've always had legal representation because I won't let it go. <laughs> I'm a bit stubborn. Um, but um, I know that my colleague Bernadette has missed out on one. I know other advocacy organisations have missed out on funding. Um, they call it CAPS application, whatever. Um, they've missed out. And um, I think it always goes badly because... I did miss that one time as a jurisdiction hearing and it did go badly because I had no idea what the member was talking about or the, uh, the lawyer. They were just talking lawyer speak and I had no idea and so my client was instantly at a disadvantage mm. so yeah, it's just not right. Fantastic. <laughs> Thanks Fiona. I hope this gets raised today, yeah? yeah. And Bernadette? Uh, I'm Bernadette from Grampians Disability Advocacy and my role is NDIS Appeals. And the main thing tying me up at the moment with work is trying to get information from the NDIS or get our role recognised within the appeals process and difficulty where they're not contacting us but contacting clients directly when we're the client's representative. And a lot of the clients, if they've come to us for assistance with their appeal, they usually don't have capacity to handle the appeal themselves, but the NDIS are not keeping us involved in the process. And as a result, clients are missing out on their right to appeal and the timeframes are associated with that. Um, not understanding um, the letters that are being sent to them or the information which mean, contained within. Which means they end up with... No appeal happening. Or and having for their plan? Declined and their plans then are ineffective for their support needs or they don't get access to the NDIS and we're starting the process over. Any particular issues for rural? Um, rural? Basically difficulty having a contact within the NDIS that you can approach to get information to support your appeals process. Also problematic for clients to actually um, be able to get the information from say an OT or a specialist because the wait lists are too long. The costs associated with that are quite um, expensive and if you don't already have access to the NDIS, a lot of people who are already on a disability pension cannot afford to go private to get the appropriate reports. Um, so there is a massive um, imbalance in being asked to provide evidence but people can't even afford to get the evidence together. Mm. So um, whereas if we can help out and at least try and talk to the professionals to get that information on behalf of the sense and present it appropriately to the NDIS because the structure that they're asking for reports in, um, a lot of people don't understand. They think that having their doctor tick a box is enough and it's not. Um, the NDIS is a bit misleading in that regard not understanding what they need to actually make a, a decent access request or to apply the funding in the plan when they don't actually understand, you know, they need more than just a therapist saying, I want 20 hours, and there's no backup to why they need that 20 hours. So it's all that information sharing. That's big issues big issue. to go to the yep. uh, NDI uh, deputy CEO who's yes. here today. Yes. Thank yes. you very exactly. much, Bernadette. Now I'm just whizzing past and now to Tilly. I'm Tilly. I'm the NDIS Appeals Officer at Leadership Plus. Um, I'm pretty excited today because of the same things, you know, that my colleagues encounter. There's a distinct power imbalance between people who can get representation and those who can't. 
um, there's a complete lack of clarity around jurisdiction. And as soon as that word is raised, people just immediately are unsure of how to navigate things. Um, I think there's also a massive lack of education about how to access the NDIS itself. So you spend enormous amounts of time gathering evidence um, when doctors are just checking boxes, which is nobody's fault. It's just that it's very unclear from the NDIS um, what information you're meant to provide. And often it feels very arbitrary, the process, you know. Um, no two cases are alike, but oftentimes you see people who have um, great difficulty in applying for the NDIS and getting access, um, who really, when I look at the information, I think, well, what else is needed? Um, so I think I'm looking forward to today um, just because I would like to learn a little bit more about how other people are handling the immense workload that we all have as, um, as advocates. Uh, we've got a huge caseload, all of us, and we're, um, we're all doing our best, but um, some clarity from the NDIA would be great. And it's the issue that advocates aren't funded to start the process only when it comes in at the appeal level. What's the, where's, where is the fault line? Well, I think there is a fault line in that, you know, things that shouldn't be going to appeal are going to appeal because they're at the very front line, you know, in the planning process, uh, the people who are attending planning meetings just don't have the resources or knowledge to um, provide adequate funding for that person as well. Um, so I think that if we really devoted our time to making sure that people within the agency are properly educated about disability and how it affects that individual, we'd see plans that are more robust and that don't have to go through the NDIS appeals process in order to be properly assessed. Thank you both to you all. It's really good to hear about it at the beginning of this day.